everybody, it's Safi and Marco dishing on the movies. The only YouTube channel, review channel, that reviews movies in terms of food. Okay, well, we are a little behind, but better late than never. Because we're doing episode three, and then we will be doing episode four of Better Call Saul. And I hope you all are watching it, because it is pretty good. A little dark, but I, I think it's good. No, I, I would say don't watch it. Just watch season four, too. Forget about <laughs> it. All right, well, this episode felt sad and empty for all those who were in it. Gus is almost worse than the Godfather. He's like Dracula, waiting to suck your blood, or the Wolfman, ready to tear out your throat. He has become a very sinister character. Remember the last episode when Nacho picked up Saul slash Jimmy while he was eating an ice cream cone? And then, of course, he had to drop it on the ground. Then a massive amount of maybe red fire ants covered the sticky, gooey mess like a mountain. In fact, they were doing a yodeling call or something. Marco said, what is that? I said, they're yodeling. Like in Switzerland. And have you ever gotten stung by one of those? It hurts. I wonder if they brought in the colony to get this camera shot because the scene of the ants on the ice cream went on for a long time. Like we were watching a scene from a National Geographic special. <clears throat> Moving on. If you've ever been in English class, high school, or college, what does the teacher slash professor always ask you to do? Diagram sentences? Perhaps, but what I remember as being the most irksome activity, because it was so hard for me to explain what a line or a word in a poem symbolized. I believe the ants on the ice cream represented a symbolic transition point. What I think is that it meant that all the characters' lives, which up to this point had been tolerable, good at times, even happy, no more. It seems everyone in the land of enchantment is headed towards darkness. And Nacho especially is walking a tightrope between two sides of evil, Gus on one side and the bad guy, the Salamanca whistleblower, on the other because he is extremely intuitive and can tell that something is not what it seems. He could end up getting killed before Nacho. Who do you think out of the two will get killed first? Maybe none of them? Maybe both at the same time? Or just uh, come up with the original answer to the original question? And there's Kim. Her dream job isn't as dreamy as she thought it would be. In fact, she actually revealed something about her background, which I think explains explains a lot about her character. And Jimmy, or is it Saul now, has lost his final innocence. He even asked Nacho if he was done with helping them. And what did Nacho reply? With a tone of finality, when you're in, you're in. Finally, Mike, who lost his final shred of decency and principles a few weeks ago when he killed that German engineer, already has begun his descent into the darkness, or maybe I should just say he landed in hell with a big thud and is flailing around like a dying fish, only stopping to snap some boy's arm for trying to... Uh, hurt him and or steal his money. So everybody, what do you think the ants on the ice cream meant? Leave a comment. I'm curious as to what people think about it. By the way, despite all the characters slipping into the darkness, I give the episode an A. All right, Marco, why don't you tell me what you think about it and did I miss anything and what you think about the ants? 
Oh, okay. I can do a review now? Okay. Uh, I, I thought it was an okay episode. It doesn't really feel like Better Call Saul to me anymore. It feels like Breaking Bad Light. Because with seasons one and two, the reason why I said that is because with seasons one and two, it, it really felt like Better Call Saul. It felt like a unique thing. It, ha it had that oddball comedy. It had the feeling that you're watching Better Call Saul. And I know what you're thinking. Well, the reason why uh, we got a Better Call Saul is because of his time in Breaking Bad. Well, yes, but if you remember, all of the time... All of the times that he was on Breaking Bad, it always felt like his show, like a, a distinctly different show. Like they would walk into his world and it would become Better Call Saul. Like even with that one episode in season five where he's uh, telling Heisenberg to uh, have Jesse get killed and he, and he's, he's using the, uh, what's that uh, dog movie? You know the the dog movie where he has to kill the dog. Oh, old old, old Yeller. Yeller. Old Yeller. He's he's like oh. using old Yeller as a, a metaphor, and it's just mm. fun, it's just funny the way that he he says it because it's so awkward for him, and you can you can just it's it's funny, and it and it's like this is better call Saul, but with this season it really seems like they're trying too hard, uh, with the whole tone and everything. Uh, and 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 I I think that Mike's storyline in this episode was very uh, useless. Well, like it, it wasn't useless, but it was just it was kind of like filler to me. It it reminded me a lot of his storyline in season three, where he joins that support group, and then he 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 gets volunteered to build the playground. Uh, that's what that reminded me of. Because if you remember in season three, he just starts building the playground and then all of a sudden he's out of the season. <laughs> and, and, and that's what it reminded me of. In terms of the ant thing, the reason why I wondered what the yodeling was, was because I thought, I was wondering if, if that was German. And, and, and so I thought maybe it had something to do with that German guy getting killed. Swiss. Uh, but it's not, it's Swiss. But then, I, I, it took me like two seconds to figure it out. Obviously, Soppy uh, is wrong about what it means. <laughs> it really it's means... It's my opinion. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> they, did, they, they came up with that. They, didn't, they came up with an exact reason why they showed that. They didn't say, like, oh, we're just... It's not like a David Lynch thing where they did that shot and then said, oh, you can interpret it however you want. No, they had a reason when they made that uh, shot. And so to me, it meant that uh, that Saul is representing the vibrant and colorful mint chocolate chip ice cream cone. And the ants are representing the criminals that are swarming to his business. And sort of like taking advantage of him until there's nothing of him left. Because that's that's really what it's like. And it took me like two seconds to figure that out because the ants they represent the criminals and then he represents the ice cream, and then of course at the end he comes back and he sees that the ice cream is almost gone. It's, it's all been eaten up by ants, and and it's it's just a representation of him uh, as Saul being uh, just swarmed. Because of all this, because I mean, that's what this season is about. It's about him uh, having his new identity and everything. So that's what I think it means. Well, I, that's what I know what it means uh, because I know what they do. <laughs> but actually, I thought that it would have been cooler. It would have been a lot more symbolic and a lot better if they had you could have two pictures on screen. You could have in the center, you could have the actual picture of the episode. Mm -hmm. And then on the outside, and then on the outside of the picture, the whole episode, you could have 
video of the ants eating the ice cream and and then at the end you you take away the center shot and then you show that the ice cream is gone i th i think that that would have been a better way to to use that side by side uh, shots no i said you superimpose oh you, you superimpose you have the episode playing in the center and then on the outside you have the ants eating the ice cream while the entire episode plays and 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 then at the end of the episode you take the center shot away and that that would have been better to me way of doing that uh with with nacho nacho <laughs> mm -hmm. uh with with him his storyline is sort of like taking precedence over everything else this season it seems uh it was nice seeing it was and it's nice too because last season the shitty season season four ugh, that season uh they had nacho in there for like a couple episodes that was sad they took him out they brought him back for a couple episodes and they took him out again and so i'm glad that he's finally uh a character on the show again and and uh and i like seeing hank too right sophie you didn't even talk part. about hank no i Oh, I was trying to be really, nice. really Sophie. You, no, I to really? me, I think they just stuck him in. But you're happy about Gomez being back? Yeah, because last time I saw I, him, it was he was just a head. Remember that? What? Yeah, they had chopped his head off. They did not. <laughs> Sophie, do you really think you know more about Breaking Bad than me? No, but okay. I I thought we just saw his head before. No, he did not get his head chopped off. He, he Did was, we just see his head, though? No. He was in the shootout. He was in the final shootout, and he got shot to death. No, I thought... Remember he had a shotgun and everything? Yeah, I know. That wasn't Gomez. That was Danny Trejo in season two. Oh. Whatever. It was pretty grim. <laughs> that was season two. Uh, Danny Trejo uh, getting his head chopped off and put on top of a tortoise. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. There you and go. And it blew up, right? Yeah, there yeah. you go. And then uh, Gomez got shot in the final shootout. Yeah. In uh, season five uh, episode, uh, well, I don't, uh, two episodes basically. But a anyways, that, uh, okay, with Kim, <laughs> and when we get to Kim, the, the devil, uh, female Chuck, uh, the victim of everything. Because when, when everyone talks about Kim, they talk about Better Call Saul. They say she's the victim of everything. She's perfect. It's all Jimmy's fault that she's this way. You know, it's it's so horrible the way she's treated. Uh, she's perfect, and it's just it makes me want to throw up. And but in in this episode, I mean, there's really no denying the way that she's turned out, and the way that she's become evil. Exactly like I said in season four, and she does something really evil in this episode, and 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 she does it because she's so, uh, I don't know, because she's just lost it, and it's not Jimmy's fault either. It's no, her. No, actually, fault. has nothing to do with him at all. Yeah. He's off. He was off with Nacho and and uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Salamanca boy. And then at the end of the episode. There's a symbolic scene where he he dangles a beer bottle and and it's it's like he's tempting her and and he's like looking for her approval to do it to throw the bottle and then she just goes ahead and throws it and then he th throws another and she throws another and and see it's just a representation of the fact that he he really isn't like full on soul yet and and he's still like looking for her approval and like trying to please her uh, even though she's she's never going to really like him because she's so evil and yeah she's going to go with the uh, establishment uh, yeah. group the, the evil firm which i i said from the very beginning oh yeah this is why you don't uh, join the evil firm and and yeah. everyone said, oh, you're sexist. You're this. You're that. You no. just don't like her because no. she's a woman. Yeah, no, has nothing to do with her being a woman, and has nothing to do with sexism. 
It has to do with making poor choices. That's it. And I predict you, anybody this, can and make I a said, poor choice. I said, why did you destroy her character? I mean, if anything, it's it's even more insulting the way that people protect her, and they act like she can do no wrong because she's a woman, or because she's Kim, and and because they're not even looking at her the way she is now, they're looking at season one and two Kim, uh, the good Kim. Oh wait, no, I mean season three as well, but yeah. So I give this episode a, a B. I don't give it a B plus like episode two. I just give it a B. Because I really don't think there's anything that makes me push it to a B plus or an A. I'm not going to overrate it like Soppy. Um, no, I'm not overrating it. I thought it was good. You're overrating it because... I don't think so. On a scale of Better Call Saul, would, nope. you, would you really put this episode up there with the, a, with the other A episodes? <coughs> like the courtroom episode... The season that was three. pretty spectacular. You really put it up where, there with that one? Well, I mean, here you are. We're mentioning one thing of symbolism. Now you're mentioning something else. So, uh, to me, uh, I thought they spent some time with it. And um, just you don't know what their motives are. <clears throat> it's just like this thing with Mike. What What is the motive for showing him... Okay, we understand, I believe we both understand why he's descended into the darkness and he's drinking and getting inebriated. He was mean to his granddaughter. And I think we both understand why that he is doing something he doesn't, he wasn't supposed to be doing that went against him. And uh, he didn't want to do it, but he did it anyway because... I think he was between a rock and a hard place, but he's so clever. It's like you said, I think he could have figured something out, but I don't know. These are bad people, and they're all over the place, and they have connections everywhere, so whatever. He didn't, he didn't even attempt to figure anything out. No, he didn't. He didn't, no, he and didn't. you wonder, you think he could have because he is very clever. But anyway, uh, so you're thinking, we've seen him now last, what, two weeks. He gets drunk. He practically passes out in fact the bartender uh made him stop and uh and then he goes home and these uh delinquents or i don't know gang bad boys whatever they are they uh bother him they harass him you know they're going to take his money or they're going to hurt him in some way and they think they've got an easy mark they don't realize he was a former cop and he kind of really knows his business about. Yeah, that, that was a mediocre scene. And uh, so a, then he ends up... A, break- that, was a, that was a pale imitation of the scene in uh, season one, episode seven, uh, where he takes the guns away from those people. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, it's a pale imitation of that scene. So he, like Marco right. said, he broke, it sounded like, and he really broke the guy's arm one of the guys who attacked him and then he says you want you all you other kids because it was more than one person you want to take me on or what you know he said something like that and they all left and he went on and uh i'm like why are they doing that why are they showing that what does it mean well okay you never answered my question about what's that you would put this episode up there the other a plus episodes the other a I didn't episodes. say A plus. I just said an A. With the other A episodes. Yeah, I I liked it. Okay. Okay. I thought it was interesting. I'm and just, uh, uh, questioning. Because also Kim revealed something about her background, which gives me a better understanding of her. If you were to her rank self. <laughs> if you were to rank all the episodes. <laughs> no, I'll probably go in the middle. I mean, because we saw some pretty spectacular ones we were talking about. Remember the time that he was trying to get out of this, being a part of this firm, and he wouldn't flush the toilet. He wore really bright, obnoxious, ostentatious colors. Because, you know, lawyers, they're very, uh, I well, unless they have handlebar mustaches. Which, to, to be fair about the toilet thing, they they also said that they were using low flow toilets. And oh, I don't yeah. I don't I don't know if you've ever used one of those before. I'm talking to the audience because I know that we have. Yeah, in a hotel. We used it 
in California. Yeah. It's probably the worst toilet uh, I've ever used. And you have to flush like four times. Yeah. And I had food poisoning. It's probably the worst toilet I've ever used. And you actually waste more water by having to flush more times. Yeah. And and so it's just horrible. And and so really, I, uh, I, it's it's no wonder how all those people at that firm were so uh, uptight and, and stubborn and everything because they're so mad they have to use those shitty toilets. Mm-hmm. I mean, if anything, he should have, Remember how he asked for that desk? Instead of asking for a desk, he should have said, "Hey, can can I have a a, a normal toilet?" And so I, well, that that's kind of like a side thing, but what whatever. I give it a B. She overrates it and give it an A. <laughs> and so that's it. That's it. Goodbye, well, everybody. Bye.